After the landslide that covered freeway number three in Taiwan, attention has turned to the structural safety of other roads and bridges around the island. Of course, in last August's Typhoon Morakot, 52 of Taiwan's bridges were taken down, most of which were built in the last 20 years. The storm may have been a one in a 200 years event, but with climate change, more extreme weather conditions are likely to occur. In the first of a new series, we look into a possible solution to rehabilitating Taiwan's broken bridges. Swept away by Typhoon Morikot, Shuangyuan Bridge has been replaced by a temporary red bridge. The storm, which hit southern Taiwan in August 2009, created raging flood waters of 27,000 cubic meters a second. A total of 52 bridges were destroyed or damaged, most of which were along the Gaoping River and its tributaries. Many of the structures were less than 20 years old. Whether they were structurally sound or not, they stood no chance. Climate change, extreme weather, and the geographical features of Taiwan make bridge building on the island a growing challenge. The main feature of Taiwan's rivers is erosion, sediment and landslides. Currently, this is the most difficult design problem, especially the force of landslides, which is difficult to predict. Erosion, silt and rock slides are the main causes of bridge damage, especially across wide estuaries. In addition, the flow downstream is often interrupted by man-made interference upstream. There are several problems. First is gravel excavation. Second is the water catchment area upstream may have been made into a dam or a weir, which holds back the sediment upstream so it can't flow down. In a very short space of time, because the riverbed gets lower, the bridges we build become unstable. The problem of falling riverbeds is worse along the Zhuoshui River in central Taiwan. The foundation pillars of the downstream bridges are dangerously exposed. The Xizhou Bridge opened in 1994. In terms of age, it's okay, it's middle-aged. But in recent years, the riverbed has dropped by about 20 meters, exposing the foundations. If there's a flood, it may affect the safety of the bridge, because the water comes in from the side, and the pillars are designed to resist vertical, not horizontal, force. Although the authorities have strengthened the exposed foundations, when a typhoon hits, they have to go back to square one. We put in buttress dams and foundation pillars, but all the structures were ruined when there was a typhoon. So in the last 10 years, we spent a lot of time and effort protecting the bridge, rebuilding every year. So around 2004, we developed a substructure replacement technique. The method involves replacing the substructure of the bridge by first driving in the piles, then attaching steel pillars and a temporary support frame. Sensors are installed and jacks used so the frame supports the weight of the bridge. Steel piles and plates hold back mud and water before the old pillars are demolished so the bridge deck is separated from the piers. When the substructure is removed, a new foundation is built with new supports and pillars. Finally, the temporary steel frame can be taken away. We deepen the foundation so no matter how low the riverbed gets, we're still underneath it. Then we make the pillars thinner, so they're less susceptible to fierce currents. The advantage of substructure replacement is it's cheap and lasts forever. Finally, during construction, the bridge can stay open. The rehabilitation technique costs one-third of the price of building a new bridge. However, the method can only strengthen substructure. For many of Taiwan's older bridges, which have thick pillars standing in the middle of the stream, the question of whether they can stand up to increasingly powerful typhoons remains unanswered. When looking at the toll Typhoon Morica took on Taiwan's bridges, perhaps we have to look for alternative solutions to the threat of climate change.